It's a really important thing, a lot of people don't treat it. You've potentially left something in there which will continue rotting. I've just got in with the big sanders at the minute. Okay, so all these pieces are now set. This is where I want to be. I'll just explain the process on how to do the splicing on this job. Here's one that's nearly finished. It's got to be sanded up, made smooth. So what I normally do, I will come to a job, take profiles of what I need, machine up another day. I'll cut out as much as I can of the rut. That will get treated with a five star wood preservative. They're all pretty much the same. It doesn't matter what brand, as long as it reads the same. But that's a really important thing. A lot of people don't treat it. You've potentially left something in there which will continue rotting. That gives the preservative chance to dry because the resin repair that we're using won't stick to that when it's wet. Then I'll come back with everything machined. All these mouldings have been machined by me. They're only small quantities, so I machine them on a table saw by hand. Just it's not worth having cutters ground just for like three or four lengths. It takes me like three or four hours. I could spend that driving to the joiner shop and back. No, it's done. Um, and then that means when I come back, I know what I'm dealing with and I will mark out what I'm gonna cut and what I'm gonna keep. Anything that might appear flaky and nasty underneath, so this piece will probably stay. That gets treated. It's a two-part system. It gets mixed up, equal measurements, and it gets painted on the rotten timber. It soaks in, and once it's gone off, it's harder than it was when it was originally put in. And because it seals it, water can't penetrate that again, so it won't rot again. It also gives something for the two-part resin system to key to. And again, it means it never cracks, never moves, so you don't get water back in, which is what started this problem in the first place. And this should be as good as new when I finished it. I'll just explain that on these pieces down here, I fully understand that there are gaps where I've spliced in. That's done intentionally because if you have too tight a gap, it doesn't allow for flex in the resin. So it's actually doing a worse job and you think you're doing a good job. And when all this is all sanded up, it will look like it's never been done when it's painted. Right, so here's a repair that I've done. This was quite a nice one actually because it, it wasn't as bad as some of the others. This didn't require splicing, but it's kept the profile around there beautifully. I've done it right into the corners so that you don't get the water coming back in. So all in these corners, which are same on sash boxes, they rot terrible. You need to get in there with the resin, you need to get in there with the two parts liquid. And you can see this dark patch here, it's not water, that's the two part liquid and it stops that timber from being porous again. I've gone into the corners, These are, this is a fixed casement this is. So I've gone right into the corner, all the way in there, which is where the water will sit. All of these, what I call, have been buttered on any contact point. So when you push it in, the resin squeezes out, trail it off, and again, you've got no worries about water getting in places where it shouldn't. Um, and that's a proper job. It's all been treated, so it shouldn't come back. There's a drip mold machined, you can't see it, but it's machined underneath there. So when the water flow comes down and round, it can't get underneath, it just drips down there where it should and doesn't come back. Right, so this is the resin that we use, two part system. You can get them in two tubes. For where I buy it on the internet, which is mypaintbrush.com, it's cheap enough just to buy in one tube. If you look inside there, you can see the two different colors. One's the activator, one's the resin. And that's what we use to stick all this lot back together. that bit, just put it to one side, I'll lay everything out in order on the scaffold and I'll slowly go through and cut out this new pieces to go in. I'll get resined in. This will all get treated with the two part liquid and then when I put the new piece in it will all have the resin buttered up so when it gets pushed in all these pieces here get filled and I'll dig this filler out as much as I can below the surface so I can get some resin on top of it to clear it. These windows are that bad that I can't dig 100% out. This is original glass in a lot of places. It can be replaced, but at a very huge expense. So there's just no need. Right, so this is old 
two-part filler. There's nothing really wrong with old two-part filler as long as they've dug back to decent timber. However, you can see that behind this, the water's got in because it doesn't seal properly in places. It will seal properly between one piece of timber but not between two and that's where the timber care resin really does do well. But I think actually now, I've already got some of this section machined up and the timber care, although it's brilliant, is very expensive. So I'm probably just gonna cut that back from there carefully. Just get rid of this piece here. In the long run, it's quicker. It's a better job. You're probably wondering why I'm only taking the fronts off and I'm leaving stuff like this. I don't wanna disturb inside the house. It will get treated with the liquid, so it will be hard again. And it's just a can of worms that doesn't need to be opened. If it can be sorted with the resin liquid, no point in taking it out. I'd like to try, famous last words, not to break this glass. So that's what we're aiming to do. in there it's quite right to take that out you know that's rotting in there you need to see what's behind things so that you can treat them properly otherwise you're wasting time and in some places like where we've got deep holes like this i'll put pieces of timber similar to what i've done down here that was just a big hole just to bulk it out really i'm sure there's a lot of you people thinking this looks like the biggest pile of rubbish you've ever seen all we're trying to do is bulk out the resin repair it really is a fucking job. It really is good for a long time to come. And that's all we try and do, just preserve what's there. I can treat all this with a two-part liquid. I'll paint it all on, and while that's going up, I can machine up the other parts that I need to start putting stuff back in. So these are just cheap disposable brushes from Amazon. There's nothing you can clean these with to reuse them, not effectively anyway. All you do, look on the side of the bottle, see where you're at. You normally find that even if I would have probably gone down to that mark last time, it's quite thick so it sticks to the sides of the bottle and when you leave it in your van it settles back down again. So I'll look there and I know that I want to get down to that mark there and that mark down there. That's round to that mark there. Tiny bit more because there'll be some in the bottle. So that's one and that's two. And you can see when you start mixing it, it changes colour and you know it's all mixed right. I know you can't smell this, it smells awful. It smells a bit like rotten eggs, but it's so good. So anyway, we've got rot, paint this on. So this is really mainly for anything that's really soft. It just saves you chopping more out than you need to. You see right underneath here, you can see it's like an old tree that's rotting away. I just get the brush load as much as I can and you can really get surprisingly well in there. In fact there was a few bits that I actually chopped off the other day and I was quite surprised. I did actually pretty much get full coverage on that. If I've got anything left over, the next part that I'm gonna repair or make good, I just use the last bits up. If it's an old window I'll put it around these bits. Even if it doesn't need a repair, it just stops it getting rotten in the future. Um, I'm just going to use up what's left here just to do this, which will be the next phase when I move up to the next level on the scaffold. Here's a piece I machined up earlier, very similar. I would just cut that down to the thickness that I want and need. Machine bits as they were done originally, so that rail will go down like that, that will go across there, same as before. You'll notice that all of my mitres go that way. This stuff should never ever crack but if it does the water runs out and away from the window if you do it the other way the water can get in that way it also works a bit like a dovetail so when you push it in i haven't got to use any mechanical fixings to, to hold it i haven't got to screw it it will just hold itself in naturally till it goes off that's the way i like to do things this should never ever crack but if it ever did at least it's going that way it will last a little bit longer Get these cut to uh, rough lengths, just to save a bit of time. No point using a tape measure just for these odd few bits until I get them to size. It's just nice to size the piece of timber up against what we're doing because there's a whole lot more that's got to be done to this because obviously that is too thick to replace what's on there and likewise there and there. And like for this bottom rail here, this bottom rail here, when I machine it down to thickness, that mould will come off. But obviously when I machine for this piece, 
that mould needs to stay on so we can reinstate it. So that gives me the depth where we're at. This is the piece that I've got for there. That will just get marked up. It's quite methodical. Everything is done to waste the least amount of time possible. So while I'm machining, that two-part system's going off. While I'm here, I'll mark up everything that I want to machine, take it to the table saw, which is on the scaffold, and I can just machine everything in one hit. So I'm not going backwards and forwards to different tools loads of times, because time's money. This is my cordless table saw. Really handy when you're doing this sort of work because you haven't got to go all the way down or set power up. Really good bit of kit. So what I've done, this is what I've marked up there. I'll set the fence literally by eye. Just because as I explained before, we're not going for millimeter precision on this because you don't need to with the resin. The resin needs some bulk to do the job. Start it up, push stick. <laughs> There we go, that's the piece for the upright. I've done that by eye, that's bang on the line. So that piece is for there, this piece is for here. All these little saw marks you can see, I've got a cordless planer, I'll bring it up here later. It'll get a tickle before it gets put in, just to make it presentable. We can start getting stuff back in shortly. And I'll machine separate bits just to bulk out this in here so we don't use too much of the resin. And that's how we do it. Is that piece for there? Piece for there. This is actually a piece that I've machined for around the other side, but we've got enough take these two little pieces off it. All I normally do is just cut these roughly to length, scribing the bottoms as I see fit, really. So that wants to be approximately 90 mil long. I'll mark which way I want it, and that will get cut again, square, and I'll mark the other. And this is too big a piece to just offer up like I did the others, you know, the others, just small bits of kindling really. I don't want to be wielding about a big piece of timber like this. The next thing we've got to do is adjust the depth on it. So that there, probably be coming off somewhere about there. And I will do this while it is in this, this bigger state, because it means I can feed it through the table saw, keep my hands well out of the way. It's the correct and safe way to do it. piece we want, go up there and there, like that, and the resin will make good the gaps that we've got. Again, you don't want it too tight, this is purely a bulking item, it's just, it'll give us a bit of profile to copy the resin round, need a few tweaks here and there to get it straight, and that's it. So that piece there, just needs a little bit more work to get that to fit. So I'm not really that bothered about, it's all part of the process. So we just scribe that in and that'll go straight in. I know some of these pieces are a little bit rough and ready, but by the time the resin's gone over the top, it doesn't really matter. The profile is pretty good here. Just needs a little bit shaving off the nose of this one. Sometimes these old timbers, you never know how much they've had shaved off them. Sometimes they were made by hand, so that you don't get the consistencies you get on modern joinery. Sometimes quite a nice thing. This is a piece that I'm using to fill this out in here. Again, I'm just marking out key points. There's a bit of a bump here. You can see it sort of tapers in a little bit. I'm not interested in digging any more out. I'll just freehand with a jigsaw. I'll put a key point on there, which is where that the rest of that is. So there, I want that to stay in. That'll get cut across there. That corner will stay in. And I'll try and match the profile in as much as I can. 
and it's a little bit of trial and error and I'll take out that piece there and that along there. And this is just packing, it is no finesse to this whatsoever. literally trial and error. And there we go. So I've got everything that I need, all the resins here, everything's been treated. I've got a few of these because I've got a few other windows to do. Fredo Frog, what's not to like. These scrapers are made by the repair care company and it's good because the stuff doesn't stick to it quite flexible which is what you need when you're trying to finish this stuff i'd buy the four hour quite a few reasons the first is the one hour is just really for small areas i don't really like the one hour that much it's not as pliable and obviously you haven't got the working time 16 hour just too too long it never seems to go off but the four is perfect because you can mix it up so you just take the nozzle off Put it in a cage gun. Now I know I'm going to be doing loads. And because you've got four hours, this will be good for at least three to work with on the pallet. So I'll mix up pretty much a whole tube on this. And you do only get about two thirds of a tube because they obviously have bits inside the tube which helps it split the dose. So I'll just put that on there like that. This is all clean and then just mix it. And you just keep mixing it until all the colour has gone through. So you can see that isn't mixed properly, that has. So I'll just grab that off. Because if you don't mix it properly, it won't go off. So that's mixed. All I'm going to do is get some in the key areas that I want underneath there, in there and in there. And then this piece will get buttered and pushed in. And then we'll fill all the gaps. The tube doesn't go far at all. Well, although I'm trying to fill every void, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't, but it is the end of the world if you haven't covered and made a seal everywhere, because the smaller the hole, the worse it will be, because you get a capillary reaction, and it'll just draw the water in twice as fast as what caused this mess in the first place, and we don't want that. Just by seeing that everything's squidging out, I can tell that it's done what I need it to do. It's filled the voids. A bit of a void in there. Don't really like them on the bottom of things because water can sit in there if it ever got in. So we just keep squidging that in. That's the first layer of that. I'm just gonna make sure that the piece that I'm putting on will clear that because we're a little bit proud in places, which is no dramas. I'll just plane a little bit off the back so it fits. That probably wants a small rebate on the bottom of that. So I'm just playing in now and then I'll mix the next lot up and we can get that glued in. So I'll just leave that on there like that because we've got a resin that. So that rail has been put in pretty much as it would have sat. You can see the level here, where it actually should come to, all the way around here. So we're gonna go about building that back in now. big areas filled and then I've got the wide scraper which I can match the profiles on so I'll come back to this in a few minutes we'll get the other one in You can 
sort of see what I mean when I'm working this. So like I can bring those faces in around there, around there, but it won't let you really get this edge right. The company do sell Perspex strips that you can use to put across there. It does work, but you end up with little hollows normally. So I normally like to build a line across the front like that and then try and get a crisp line on it as best I can, that I can fill to. Within a couple of hours, this becomes almost like a stiff gel. You can sort of work a lot better. So it means you can actually scrape round and get the profile back without losing this front edge. So that's what we'll be aiming to do later on. It's very important wherever possible. If you can, not to overfill too much because it is so difficult to sand, especially right in the corners. You're just not gonna get in there with anything perhaps maybe a Dremel, but life's too short to go around sanding the things that you could have troweled up properly in the first place. You may as well just do it properly. Spend that little bit of extra time, which is good with the four hour, because it gives you time to work with it, rather than spending hours trying to sort it out the next day and wish that you'd done it the day before. This is probably one of the worst windows I've done for rot. This repair will last a very long time. And at least the client knows that maybe 20 years time, I've seen new windows that go in that don't last 20 years, so the only place I do leave things proud is where you've got these mouldings. You can get the channels in. Surface parts are quite easy to blend in with a razor sharp chisel, but the grooves, they're a nightmare to try and introduce afterwards. So I'll try and get those in now. As this one's quite a thin, well cut piece it's enough to make it stick it's only really end grain you need to leave big voids to give it something to stick to so i like to make sure that it's got a good coating all the way across same as you do for porcelain tiles and things really just because you know that it'll stick see that squidging out it's exactly what we want same as before get the voids filled very important get the mitre filled. I'll just put it in to see how it sits while I mix some more up. We'll soon see where it's touching and where it's not. Okay, so all these pieces now set, which is where I want to be, really. So then I can start going in, filling all these areas. I've got time to make it look right and get it all sealed up properly. It doesn't particularly matter too much. Some of these areas are a little bit proud. I can come in with a sander and sand the wood down. It's no drama. Some of these edges here, I've got a belt sander that luckily enough fits this profile. So I can get right in there with that and it will come up fantastic. It's more important that I get the areas set first and then I can deal with the individual areas one stage at a time. But really important for all these areas along here where the water would normally sit to get sealed up properly to have a nice bit of a ramp there so nothing like this happens again on this window really even though it does look completely wrecked this timber care stuff really does hold things off really well so what the wider scraper does enables me to follow that profile of what the original window was and hopefully should cut down on the sanding time which is what we're aiming for really and this that i'm just going over now you can actually see that there's cracks in, in the grain and so i'm literally just scraping across it filling in those cracks and uh, again we're just trying to stop water ingress that's all we're trying to do see that one there is probably a perfect example of the of trailing to different lines so you've got a line to work to there enables me to go around that way and come down that way but if you've got nothing there or like that one you know you're just going to have to come back to it, it just doesn't it just doesn't work in the same way so we're probably going to have to come back to this one either later on this afternoon if it's gone off or tomorrow when we do some finishing work it's a bit of a shame because because it takes four hours to go off it's nice to try and get it all in one hit really so i'm just going in filling all these bits in here and a lot of this may look a bit crude. I'm just trying to form a shape and sand it all up tomorrow. I'm not even that bothered if I have to come back to this. So I will underfill it if I have to. It just moves about too much if it's too deep.
I know when it's finished that this won't line up with that one. I know that. It probably hasn't for the past hundred years. And that's what we're trying to do. We're not trying to put it back. Perfect, we're trying to put it back so it didn't look like it's been touched. You do it too perfect, it just doesn't look right for this building. That's pretty good. It's lined in pretty well. When that's sanded, come up pretty smart. It's never gonna look like this one until it's finished. This one was slightly easier because I've replaced the cell, which gives you straight edges to work off. So this morning, I started sanding this lot here. I've just got in with the big sanders at the minute, just to take the main bits of it off, and I'll get in with a small detail sander in the corners, all these areas here. If you can see, it's already coming up pretty smooth. It is, despite its look, quite flawless here. That's a piece I glued up yesterday. That's pretty strong. I don't really want to break it, but no cracks on that from that. And that is a tiny bit of resin. So when you think a piece up there with that much contact area, that is, in my eyes, as good as no. With the bigger sanding on this little lot here, I'll try and get some of these edges flatted back. I do know that there will be little divots in places, but same company that do the resin do like a finishing filler that goes on the top of this which goes off in about an hour and it's a lot easier to sand so i always try not to overfill because it is awkward to sand So that's most of the big stuff done and to get in the corners I need the smaller sander. Some of the smaller areas I have to get in with a multi-tool and a chisel. You never get all of it out and it will have to be smoothed off with a finishing filler afterwards. But it does its job, you know, that is so strong now. Really has done a good job on this. And just a few areas up top to sand up that I've done yesterday and we're good, ready for decoration. Then I'll have a coat of paint so we can see any more discrepancies. Thank you for again. So that's most of the sanding done. I'm just going to go in with the multi tool, straighten these moulds that I've introduced back in, try and sharpen up a few of these little detail points in here in the corners which you can only really get in with a multi-tool and you can't really see it from here but you can see from up top I've sort of scooped in all this back in it's a shame really it looks quite good from up there and no one's ever going to see it but it will do its job so that's good half of this pretty much resined in, sanded back. You can see we've got the detail back on this mould in here. All this is nice and crisp in the corners. It's smooth, you can't actually feel the join on that. Same on every bay of this. It will need a small coat. I'm gonna use this stuff, which is made by the same people, Repair Care, just a fine surface filler. Just to get rid of a few of these last little imperfections in the corners around here, and a few of the divots just so it's ready for painting. It hasn't all looked super crisp and straight because the rest of the old windows aren't super crisp and straight and it wouldn't look right. And when it's painted, you shouldn't know where the repairs are really. Mm -hmm. 